the broken-hearted Tuasa. Well, this is kind of like... This is a continuation of the previous video where pain is a choice. I think after grade 12, I applied to go study a university, as most people do. I didn't know what else to do. I didn't know what I wanted to do exactly. And I know my teachers had told me to go study that. Since I was good at computers, I could go study computers at university and maybe that would be something I'd enjoy, something I'd be good at, something that would make me a good living and would give me a good life, a life I could be content with, a life that would be enjoyable, that I would get most of the good things in life. If I tried and if I tried hard enough, I could rise higher, maybe. Because computer science kind of has no limits, or you're kind of limited by your own work ethic, your own knowledge, your own drive. That's what I went to university to study. It was fun. It was, well, school. Nothing much had changed, but except for the amount of people in a class, the amount of people in the university. It's just a huge change, I would say, from the boys' school that I'd come from. There's a lot more people, a lot more personalities, a lot more dynamics that weren't present or non-existent in high school, in the boys' school that I went to, because now there were girls within the school, and with that came other factors, other parts of life, different dynamics, different interactions within relationships that... I was not used to that I hadn't cared for but carrying on as who I was there was still this yearning this goal that I had to continue feeling to continue experiencing what life had to offer what life could give I wanted to feel more even if it was just more pain. And from what I had seen, from what I had experienced, from what I had watched on TV, on the internet, on YouTube, there was this, this thing called heartbreak that many musicians, many people would sing about the top of their lungs. Like... It was something enjoyable, like it was an experience that everyone should have in their life. And not just any regular heartbreak, not some random loss, but a romantic heartbreak to lose someone that you had been madly in love with. The one, as they would put it, the, your soulmate, the one that you came to earth with that was chosen for you and if it didn't work out with that one then it would never work out and your life would be a misery and yeah basically doom and destruction that was what was celebrated that was what people sang about that's what sold it was this romanticism this love this unconditional love. There were no principles. There were no ideals. There was no structure to it. No one else was involved 
in this process, but you and whoever your object of affection might have been. I didn't believe in God then. So the only ideal I could have was in other people, maybe role models, maybe people I looked up to, people in my life that had raised me, people that had been an inspiration to me, I'd say. But now there was this new factor, this new interaction that had been unlocked in my life. And with it came, I think, my first solid and concrete interaction or experience with the ideal or an ideal. So university carried on. I don't think I was one to fall in love, I would say, for, I don't think I cared much for it. There were other things on my mind. And most of all, maybe I couldn't feel it. So I did all the other things that I had to do. I studied, I went to break high, made friends joined the gym and that was basically life study break gym I don't know if I partied at all during the first year but that doesn't matter anyway that was most of the year until until later on in the year When I met some girl, well, I think the girl had always been around the area, always in the vicinity, always in the places I walked to, the lectures I went to, but I didn't pay her any mind. I didn't care in a sense. Then I started developing what I would say a crush, but I wouldn't call it a crush necessarily because I'd had crushes before, before high school, and this was this was different. This wasn't affection in a way or admiration for someone else. This was like a burning need, a burning desire, something, something unnatural. It was like, I think it was kind of like the first signs that I had a calling, but I didn't know what a calling was. I didn't know what Sangomas were or what they would feel, what signs they would have, but in a sense, I could sense where she was, or if she was nearby, or approaching within the area I was in. It's either I would smell flowers, like really, really good smelling flowers and every time I smelled those flowers I knew that she was close and all of the time I was right she would appear in some place somewhere and in other times if I was sitting in an area where she was in I would feel an immense heat to the point where I would actually start sweating. Even in the middle of winter, 
like it would be cold outside the aircon would be on in the computer room and now would still be sweating everyone would be wearing their hoodies everyone would be wearing their jerseys and i'd be taking mine off because of this heat because of these feelings that i felt that i did not understand I knew their source, but I didn't know why they were so intense, why they were so aggressive, I would say, to the point of annoyance. And I, I think that, that, was, that was what drove me. Because I don't, I don't think if, if they weren't as intense, I wouldn't have approached her. I really wouldn't have. I would have just carried on my life. I would have carried on with my life, but... They were strong enough to compel me, to push me. So I went, I approached her, talked to her, asked her out, went out, that was fun. I think we enjoyed each other's company. And we ended up dating. And to me, I was just like, yeah, I've done everything I had to do. It was kind of like a, a checklist of kind of like steps to follow to have a relationship or to kind of like sate these feelings that I felt. And after that, I thought that they would go away or the uncomfortable heat would subside and for the most part it did but I could still sense her I could still smell her I could still feel her being in a way and this only happened with her not with any other person I couldn't sense other people I didn't know where other people were or how they felt but I knew about her and in a way I kind of like thought that this was just because I was romantically involved with her but nah it was still very very strange very strange because I had had girlfriends before and I couldn't sense them. I couldn't feel their being. I didn't know where they were. I didn't know that they would call before they called in a way. I didn't have this kind of like omniscience with them that I had with her. And the relationship was fun, I'd say. We spent... Well, I wouldn't say it was as intense as kind of like puppy love and kind of like the love you have when you're young, when you're a teenager and you're experimenting and just trying to figure things out, I'd say. It had structure, it had discipline. There were specific times that we met. We usually met once a week because, well, university was so demanding. And I don't know, we both had kind of like other things to do with friends. We had gym to go to, other events. And yeah, we usually meet once a week. And that was fine, that was all right. And we'd talk for about an hour each day. And I thought that was enough. And it was. But as the relationship progressed, as it went along, I had this sense of doom, this feeling of 
an impending doom that was coming that no matter what we did, no matter how hard we tried, no matter who we prayed to that sooner or later this relationship would end that it wasn't built to last that this wasn't that get married and live happily ever after relationship and in a sense this feeling of doing this knowledge or prophecy of the end kind of it made me contemplate as to whether I wanted to continue investing or if I should withdraw withdraw my investments withdraw my emotions in a sense and kind of prepare for the end and being me and Kind of like having this desire, this need to feel all that I could feel, all that this life had to give. Not only did I choose to carry on the way I had been carrying on throughout the relationship, but I chose to invest all of myself, every single part that I had, every single emotion every single essence of my being I would say and I just poured it into this relationship I just poured it into her knowing very well that it would end knowing very well that if you'd put this much of yourself into someone else that the end would hurt that much more it was kind of masochistic when i think about it but it made sense to me and with this being my choice i knew that i would have no regrets when it eventually did come to an end that it would be something that i chose that i had chosen the pain that would come or the heartbreak that would come from the end of this relationship. And it was about a week before I broke up with her. I was at school, just sitting, not doing anything in particular. And I felt this heaviness, this immense weight on my entire body, on my entire being that I didn't understand, that I thought would be a passing feeling, that there was nothing to worry myself about, nothing to think too much about. And this was after class and I was preparing myself to go home. But as the time passed, as the time grew near to go home, this heaviness grew heavier and heavier. It was like a black, dark cloud had just engulfed me and it wouldn't let me go. It wouldn't end. No matter how much I thought, no matter how much I tried to contemplate as to why I would be feeling this way. For there was nothing in my life that was going wrong. Nothing in my life that I could even complain about. I got in the car and made my way back home. And on the drive back home, my heart grew heavier and heavier and heavier. And I could feel my throat kind of like grow heavy to the point where it was hard to speak. And I just knew that if I could just 
get to my room that I could sit there and just think about why I was feeling this way. And I finally did get to my room and this huge wave of sadness and pain just befell me and I didn't know why, where it was coming from or what had opened it, what had sparked it. And it just kept on coming. So I just thought that maybe if I set it out for an hour, that it would fade off, it would pass, I would calm down and kind of like regain my senses and master myself again and continue with my day but this time it didn't end an hour passed and it just seemed like the pain was just amplifying it just grew in magnitude it literally felt like little pins were being pushed into my heart a thousand times over at the same time. It was like little pricks over and over and over again. I had never felt anything like it. I had felt, I'd, I had felt pain before, but not like this. This was new. This was something else. the point where I kind of like sat up and I looked at my heart I was just like what the hell is happening what is what is wrong with it is it malfunctioning it has lost it and I kind of like grabbed it with my right hand and I kind of like tried to claw at it to kind of like take it out in a sense for I didn't understand why it hurt. Why was I heartbroken on a random Tuesday of the week? And the pain just kept growing and it kept growing and it kept growing and it kept growing. And, growing. and I kind of like got off my bed to go grab a towel from my wardrobe and from there I just kind of like sat on the floor and after sitting I kind of like laid on the floor and from there it just kept getting darker and darker and darker and the pain just kept growing and at this point, I was kind of like tired of asking, tired of thinking of, trying to figure out why I was in this pain. Now I was just angry. I was angry at myself for feeling this pain for no reason at all. What was wrong with me? The more the pain grew, the more my anger grew. And continuing from the story before, like suicidal thoughts weren't foreign to me. Like they were just kind of like passing thoughts, I'd say. There were things I knew that they would just come and go and nothing too serious. But this time on this day, on that floor, it kind of felt like it wasn't me, like it was someone else that had taken over my body and just wanted to end it all in a sense.
not end it all, but end the pain. End this pain that I was in, this pain that I was feeling, this pain whose source I did not know. It wasn't a thought anymore. It was a compelling force. Something with its own life, with its own breath. Something that fought against me. Something within me that fought against me. It was like I was fighting against myself for my own life. Some time passed and I kind of like blacked out and woke up about an hour later on the floor. And I got up from there and went to sleep on my bed. But after that day, I wasn't the same. It was like my heart was opening more and more. It was peeling and kind of like letting out what I had locked inside, what I had chosen to forget, what I had chosen to forgive. And this sadness, this pain, decreased in magnitude, but now it was consistent. It was kind of like a state I was in every hour of every day from that day forward. And as the time passed, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I didn't know how to stop this pain. And I just figured that I would need time to kind of like focus on myself to figure this out. So that was when I ended the relationship. And in a sense, that ending kind of broke my heart even more. And the pain just multiplied in a sense. Just increased in magnitude to heights I had not known before. To heights I had never felt in my entire life. Not for anything else. Not in any other time. And I didn't know what to do with it. I think I'd bitten off more than I could chew and was now trying to spit it out in a panic, in a frenzy, but my mouth was shut. I could not spit. So I had to sit within the pain and feel it, feel all of it, all that it came with, all that it was. And from within the relationship, I knew that the relationship would end and I knew that I would have no regrets. But that feeling of not regretting only came after some time for in the moment, in the pain, When it got too unbearable, I thought about all that I had done. All my actions that had led me up to this point. All this pain that I had inflicted upon myself. But I knew that it was better to feel this pain than it was to feel nothing at all. And I think that's where things went from bad to worse. For something else happened during that time. That was also tragic 
and it kind of like added to the pain it added to the state and for the first time in something close to three years I blacked out and lost time again I kind of like skipped two days ahead and it's kind of weird when you do because you'd be sitting on your desk on Monday and you'd come back to consciousness at school sitting in a lecture on Wednesday And you wouldn't know where that time went. You wouldn't know what you had done. And this time, this time it was different. Because the last time when I had skipped time, when I had skipped these two years of my life, first of all, it was planned out. It was structured. I had a routine to kind of like keep my life going while I was gone. And... It was self-induced. This time I was not in control. I didn't know when it was going to happen. Or for how long I was going to be gone. And from this uncertainty, from this randomness, kind of like this attack upon my own consciousness from an entity I did not know. I developed an intense amount of anxiety, an anxiety that existed every second of every day because I knew that I could disappear in, in any second and I didn't know for how long I would be gone. And I kind of had to change my life or change the way I live my life in a sense. But now I needed a routine for when I was present, that I would sit, that I would study for my exams, that I would do what I needed to do while I was still here. Because I knew that I could disappear in any moment and I did not trust whoever would take my place to continue studying, to continue doing what I needed to do in order to proceed with my life. And that was the case. For in some days I would black out right a day or two days before an exam. And I'd kind of like wake up on the morning of the exam having done nothing for the past two days, having not been there at all. But since I had made this routine, since I would studied weeks before, I knew that I was still prepared. That even if I lost two, three days before the exam, it wouldn't make a difference at all. I continued, I passed my tests and it was kind of surreal to kind of live in that state because well people that kind of like attempt or think about attempting suicide don't really want to die the attempt is kind of like a cry for help to maybe someone to maybe a community that does not see them that does not take them seriously that does not believe in the magnitude of their pain their suffering their imprisonment or their struggle and the risk of a possible death 
in order to receive this attention to possibly receive help is worth it it is worth the attempt and I thought about the day when I had felt that immense pain the day that I had ended up on the floor as to I didn't understand why I had felt that much pain why I'd had that urge for my life was more or less perfect I would say so there was someone else someone within, within me someone crying out for help for attention for expression I didn't know who that was then but I do now and having the perspective I have now having knowing that I am called that maybe I wasn't born alone and that living my life as if I was alone as if there was no one else within me no one else that probably had different desires that had a different plan for my life maybe that was selfish that was suffocating for them that me ignoring their cries for help was something that pained them for I knew the life I was living felt like a lie no matter how good it was for I think I was on the metro bus back home later on in that year our transcripts had just been released I just got in the email from the university and I opened it and right there on the bus I could feel kind of like a panic attack starting up again for they happened randomly at any place any time unprovoked so right there on that bus as I looked at my transcript And I saw that I had about five first class passes and three merit awards for the work I had done that year. And not only that, but I had made it onto the dean's list on the, of the university. You would think that anyone would be happy to see this anyone would be happy to have these results to be the person that could achieve at such a high level but right then and there all I could think about were the tears that were flowing down my face because they were the only thing that made sense for I did not like the life that I was living I do not want to be the person that I was I had a deep-seated hatred for myself and that was something nothing else could fix there was no medicine no ailment that could numb this pain that could numb this existence this lie that I'd created for myself, this life that I'd built around me, 
that now felt like a prison but one I had to continue with one I had to keep up for there were many other people that wanted to see it carry on that cheered for it that rooted for it that supported it financed it And maybe I didn't want to let them down. And maybe some part of me just didn't know why exactly I felt that way. Why exactly I had this deep-seated hatred for myself. And as the year ended and the next year came about, I think the breakup had kind of like opened up my heart in a way it had finally broken it to the point where I couldn't close it up again I couldn't seal it I couldn't lock away whatever memories whatever emotions I did not want to feel back when I was a teenager back when I was a child and now it was all coming back, it was all coming out. And kind of like these memories, these feelings that I had locked up would kind of like resurface every time I'd have a random panic attack on some random day. It was like kind of like unlocking new memories of my own life. Things so monumental that I was puzzled as to how I could forget such things. How could I completely just erase them from my conscious memory and continue living as if they had never happened? But they still yearned for a voice. They still yearned for breath. And they were finally receiving that. Air was finally going into my heart. And even though it was one of the most painful times of my life, it was also one of the most liberating times. One of the most freeing times to finally know myself to accept who I was the way I was and not try to change not try to numb not try to mold myself into someone that I was not someone I did not recognize and this love that I'd had for this girl. It kind of continued without her presence, even though she was gone. The love only grew deeper. It only grew stronger with her absence. And in a sense, I knew that I did not know her. I did not know her at all for... We had only dated for about two months and... Out of those two months, we only met once a week. So... That was kind of like less than a handful of meetings. Not enough to know someone, not enough to warrant this amount of emotion for. I think I was more in love with her ideal than I was with her. And this was kind of like my first encounter with an ideal. 
poor I was not raised in a church I didn't particularly care much about the rituals and the practices that were done at home and I had never really loved anyone at all not in any unconditional way and in a sense my love for the actual physical person was conditional I think the condition was that I would stay in good health and good standing physically and emotionally and as soon as my emotional health declined in a sense that was a break in the condition therefore my love for her ended but the unconditional love the unconditional love I had for the ideal that that remained that I kept feeding and that kept feeding me for in this immense pain that came from this immense love it's kind of like the pain grew the love and the love grew the pain in a sense it was they fed each other and even though there was immense pain there was also immense joy at the same time for it is also a time that I look back fondly at and reminisce about now that I've grown older in years and kind of like healed past all the things that I had repressed past all the things that I had forgotten now that I can feel fully I know that I wouldn't change a single thing that if I were to go back that things would happen exactly the way that they did happen I grew a lot in that time I experienced a lot and I think I lost the ignorance of youth for now I had experience now I had known I had known pain I had known love I had known the difference between real life and the ideal that maybe a romantic partner you have and the ideal you kind of have often aren't the same person and you don't love them the same and in a sense I think I kind of grew in maturity I lost that youthful ignorance on my face that look you usually see on first years they have their eyes always wide open as if they're trying to take in as much light as much information as possible I was less curious less interested in experience more reactionary and in a sense I think that was the time where I started shifting from having a liberal view of the world of people of dynamics and politics to a more conservative view For now I'd known how easy it was to lose a good thing.
And in a sense, you kind of like see this as you interact with initiates, with other healers, I would say. For on, on some healers, well, I'd say majority of the healers. You can see this sense of knowledge, I would say, this pain within their eyes and on their face. And this knowledge of this pain kind of like makes them more grateful, more appreciative of. I'd say grace and the life they are living, the gifts they've been given and kind of like other gifted people. A grace that you do not see on, I would say other initiates that have not known deep heartbreak. For I think heartbreak is a very important thing in initiation, especially with Jenny. It comes with a lot of knowledge. It opens you up to the spiritual realm. And maybe why, and maybe that's why most spiritual people usually have a very, very hard time with relationships. Not because they themselves are bad at them or are unlucky, but because it is necessary for their own growth, for their own being. For I've seen this in men as well, in quote-unquote red pill men, I would say. For there is a difference between red-pilled men that have loved before, red-pilled men that have been heartbroken, that gained this insight, this revelation, this salvation from experience, and those that read it from a book, for the ones that read it from a book, kind of like seem they're in seem like they're in a fight club. Exactly how kind of like the minions were in the movie with Brad Pitt. There's a kind of anger, a kind of drive and need for power. And in a sense, it's not that they give grace to those above them, to their leader, because of their knowledge, because of their knowledge of difference, of their knowledge of life, of pain, of loss. But they give grace because they know that they are in a hierarchy. Because they know they are in a hierarchy and they are kind of like positions of power. And in a sense, it's kind of like a race for power. A race to rise or an underlying need, an underlying anger that wants to destroy, that wants to bring everything down. <laughs>